The Libyan ambassador to the United Nations makes an impassioned plea for help. And hundreds of foreigners fleeing Libya by ferry finally arrive in Malta. Please, United Nations, save Libya. No to bloodshed, no to killing of innocents. A defiant Muammar Gaddafi has, Gaddafi has appeared before his supporters in Tripoli telling the crowd, we will continue to fight, we will defeat them and we will die on Libyan soil. The leader made it very clear he has no intention of standing down despite growing dissent within his country. Making new threats against pro-democracy demonstrators, Gaddafi said he was prepared to arm his people to defeat the enemy. <laughs> Reply to them. Answer the agents. Reply to the liars. Reply to the news agencies. Radio and television of lies. The mass media of lies. This is no media. It is the media of lies. Reply to them. This is the Libyan people. If I'm not loved by my people, I don't deserve to live. If my people, the Arab and African peoples, and all peoples do not love Muammar al-Qadhafi, Muammar al-Qadhafi does not deserve to live only for one day. If I am not beloved by my people, I cannot deserve to live. You are the people. Be prepared to defend Libya. Be prepared to defend the great river, the oil. Be prepared to defend your pride, independence, dignity and glory. Reply to them. Let them feel the embarrassment, feel the shame, let them feel the humiliation. I am among the public, here in Tripoli, the Green Square. Here are the youth, the children and grandchildren of the martyrs, the martyrs of battles of jihad who crushed the Italian invasion. The Italian empire was crushed at the hands of your forefathers. We are capable of destroying any aggression. Any aggression can be crushed by the people's will, the armed people, the armed people. And when necessary, weapons depot will be opened for all the Libyans to be armed. All the tribe will be armed, so Libya will turn into a burning hell. I've come here to salute you, salute your courage, and tell you to reply to them. I'm here among the people, among the masses. Muammar al-Qadhafi is not a president, or a king, or a head of government, with no constitutional or administrative powers. He is loved and beloved by the people. We are the people of pride, glory, and dignity, history, and struggle. It is the people who brought Italy to its knees. It is, you are the grandchildren of Omar Mukhtar, the grandchildren of revolution, the revolution that brought Italy to its knees and forced Italy to apologize. You are the grandchildren of martyrs, Omar Mukhtar, the hero of the forest, the leader of the revolution and the re Libyan resistance. You are the people who forced Italy to apologize and pay compensations. With humiliation, it is revolution that made Italy to apologize and pay compensation in humiliation. It is revolution that put Libya to the top, the leader of the third world, if not the whole world. It is revolution that made the Libyan people at the top, made the Libyan people glorified with dignity. The Libyan ambassador to the United Nations has spoken out in defense of pro-democracy demonstrators. He says the crackdown has to stop. They, they are asking for democracy, they are asking for progress, they are asking for, for freedom, they are asking for their rights. They demonstrated peacefully, they didn't throw a single stone, they were killed. What did Brother Muammar Gaddafi said? He said that these people use these hallucination tablets. Ten thousand, tens of thousands would need mountains of these pills to lose their uh, brains and minds and uh, act. One million turned out in Benghazi yesterday.
what uh, the, the the green mountain of of a, ma a mountain of tablets uh, that the colonel claims would not be enough Muammar Gaddafi and his sons are telling the Libyans either I rule you or I kill you We are going to go now to the United Nations headquarters in New York. The Brazilian ambassador to the UN is addressing reporters. Let's take a listen to what she has to say. Cost lives. How quickly do you think that the Security Council can act? Can, can you approve a resolution tomorrow? Is that possible? There is a sense of urgency on the part of the members of the Council, and this is re uh, reflected in our decision to uh, continue this uh, consultation tomorrow. And uh, um, there is a possibility that we might come to a uh, conclusion by tomorrow. The role to the International Criminal Court is, is included. Has, has any member expressed concern about that? Can you see that being a sticking point? I prefer not to get into the details of the, the measures because they are going to be discussed tomorrow. In Portuguese. Há um sentido de urgência em relação às deliberações do Conselho. Uh, nós decidimos uh, reunir-nos uh, uh, amanhã uma outra vez. Uh, ficou marcada uma reunião para amanhã, uh, na parte da manhã. Há um sentido de urgência no Conselho de Segurança entre os membros do Conselho. That is the Brazilian ambassador to the United Nations addressing reporters talking about the situation in Libya. Uh, let's talk to Scott Heidler, who's at the United Nations, uh, covering this for us at the headquarters there in New York. Uh, Scott, uh, the United Nations now talking about sanctions. What's the latest there? Yeah, and this is the, the Brazilian ambassador to the United Nations. She's the acting president of the Security Council, and they just adjourned um, closed consultations on Libya. Um, they had uh, a briefing by the Secretary General Ban Ki-moon and a very emotional speech by the Libyan ambassador to the United Nations, and then they went into closed consultations, and then um, out of that, um, a press statement was read by the, uh, the president of, rotating president of the Security Council, and that's what we just heard. What the latest is, and what she uh, essentially detailed, is that um, a draft resolution has been looked over. Most likely what we're going to see is, um, and you just heard a reporter asking this question, um, a resolution passed, and this is what the sources are telling us, passed by the end of the day tomorrow. And in this um, resolution, there's a call for an arms embargo, freezing of assets, a travel ban, um, several different things. No military action or any uh, uh, real strong action, if you will, outside of sanctions and, and arms embargoes. Um, and we expect that to be um, approved, at least our sources are telling us, and, and the Security Council is hoping that it will be approved by tomorrow afternoon. Um, what these sources have been telling us over the last couple of days is they really wanted to get something done in the Security Council because of a lot of criticism over the past couple of days because their first action uh, after the, the violence in Libya really escalated was a press statement, just a simple press statement that came out on Tuesday. So they've really been pushing to get something through and a resolution sounds like it's probably going to pass tomorrow, which might in, in, in normal terms sound to be uh, pretty slow even at that because it's taken several days, but in uh, UN terms it's going through pretty quickly. Well, Scott, in spite of the fact that this might be a long time in coming, these uh, sanctions that the United Nations wants to impose in Libya, what are they really expecting from the Libyan leader? I mean, it's one thing imposing sanctions, but what are they asking him to do? What do they want? Yeah, and it's, it's interesting because uh, Secretary General Ban Ki-moon had a press conference just after his briefing to the Security Council, and, and I addressed that, that exact question to him. Uh, I, I made it even a little bit more specific, I thought because he, he was very impassioned in his uh, speech as well, saying that, you know, it's an urgent time, um, loss of time means loss of life. And I asked him specifically, okay, so that means loss of time means loss of life. Will sanctions do that? Will embargoes do that? Will travel freezes do that? Uh, sorry, uh, asset freezes, travel bans do that? Should there be military intervention? And he deferred that to the Security Council and said that there are a wide, arrange, wide range of options on the table, so it's up to them to decide. But what we're hearing, there aren't going to be any uh, uh, military uh, actions in this resolution. Um, it sounds like what might happen is that might have to be done um, by coalitions or other countries maybe doing that together but right now we know in this resolution that's most likely going to pass the Security Council tomorrow eh, there is no military intervention in that or a mention of a fly zone, no fly zone. All right, thanks Scott. Scott Heidler there at UN headquarters in New York. We can now talk to Marie Albejean.